All right, good morning. morning. All right, I have one for you. Uh, This happened to an Englishman in France who was totally drunk. And a French policeman stops the Englishman's car and asks if he's been drinking. And with great difficulty, the Englishman admits that he has been drinking all day. In fact, uh, his daughter got married that morning, and he drank some champagne. And then at the reception, he had a few bottles of wine, followed by many, many single malt scotches thereafter. Quite upset, the policeman proceeds to do the alcohol test, the breath test on him, and, uh, and verifies that the Englishman is indeed totally, totally totally sloshed. Yeah. So he asked the Englishman if he knows why, under French law, he is going to be arrested. And the Englishman answers with this. He says, no, sir, I do not. But while we're asking questions, I've got one for you. Yeah. Do you realize this is a British car and that my wife is driving on the other side. Yeah. Think about it. Hmm? So today I'm talking about powerful thought, but particularly powerful thought in terms of how happy we are in life. Um, in, uh, well, over 100 years ago, Abraham Lincoln said it like this, I believe that most people are about as happy as they make up their minds to be. And that was true then, and I believe it's absolutely true now. We are about as happy in life as we make up our minds to be. Now, in A Course in Miracles, it says, one of the lessons is, happiness is a decision I must make. And one of the things I've learned is that that's not a decision you make once and never have to think about it again. In fact, it's a decision we make sometimes every day, sometimes multiple times a day, sometimes multiple times an hour. That, you know, I choose to be happy here. I choose to be happy here. Ernest Holmes in The Science of Mind said this. He said, humanity has the power to control its own destiny. So it's not already set, our destiny. You know, and he goes on to talk about how prayer is essential to our happiness. In the Bible, it says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what we teach in Science of Mind is that causation, the cause of things in our life, starts in here. Right? It has to do with something that I am doing. It has to do with something that you're doing. You know, um, a misuse of mental and spiritual laws, Ernest Holmes teaches us, is, the, is at the root of many unhappy conditions because we've worked incorrectly with spiritual law. So we are surrounded by an infinite mind. This is what we teach. We are surrounded by an infinite mind which reacts to our thought according to spiritual law. So. A powerful thought is, you know, I can choose to be happy no matter what. So I want you to sit with that for a second. I can choose to be happy, or I choose to be happy no matter what. See, my happiness is not dependent on externals. And I think this is really important for us as students of the science of mind to get this idea that, oh, it's not things out here that make me happy, it's things that happen in here. This is what really contributes to my happiness here. In fact, externals, things out here in the outer world, will actually begin to correspond to my own inner state of happiness. The experiences out here will rise up to the predominant mental state that I entertain most of the time. But if you are dissatisfied in the universe, then then the universe will give you what you're focusing on. Oh, I'm so unhappy, things don't work out for me, things never work, blah, blah, on and on and on. If you focus on that, the universe is going to give you a lot more of it. Not as a punishing, but because what I focus on increases. That's the way the law works. You know, it's the difference of um, getting up in the morning and saying what a lot of people say, oh, good God, morning. I've got to get through another day, as opposed to good morning, God. Right? Those are two different days, I'm here to tell you. you know, and I don't know which category you fall into currently, but if you are in the good God morning category, here's an opportunity for a little shift upwards. You know? we, we can always wait for circumstances to change, right? because this is what most people do. Most people say that my happiness is dependent on something outside of me. If somebody loves me, if I get somebody in my life, if I get somebody out of my life, if I get this job, if I get a better job, if I have this, da, da, all of those are external things. 
And so, you know, those circumstances, we can always say, well, gee, you know, if this happens outside of me, then I will be happy. Then I could really allow myself to be happy. But, you know, when every single thing, it, it, because that's that, see, there's a mythology that when things are all perfect, when everything lines up exactly as I imagine it could be, then that's when I'll get to be happy. That's inaccurate. You need to start right now with whatever is in your life, whatever the conditions may be, you know, to know that, you know, I, I choose. I am making a conscious choice that I will be happy and circumstances will be what they will be. Hear that. The circumstances are not what's in charge of your happiness. You, your mind, your thinking is what's in charge of your happiness. And if you make a decision to be happy, circumstances will rise up to support that. See, I believe that happiness is also possessing the strength of character to make good choices in every moment. That's why I said sometimes we have to choose happiness again and again and again. And happiness is also the strength of character to make good choices. You know, it's not about the, the hand that life has dealt me. Oh, life has dealt me such unfortunate cards. Yeah, 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 welcome to the club, you know. People often ask, you know, how, could, you know, how can I find happiness, you know? And they say, you know, because they're saying, well, I wish I felt good today. If I felt good, then I'd be happy. Well, how can I find happiness? If I wasn't so depressed, then I could be happy. You know, I, I, I want there to be joy in my life again. If I wasn't, uh, if I had the joy in my life, then I could just be happy all the time. Happiness will not magically come to you. I think that's a fantasy. That's an illusion, right? It's not something you will one day possess, something that will be bestowed upon you by some external circumstances. Remember, Happiness is the decision I must make. You and I, we get to choose again and again and again to be happy regardless of what the circumstances are. And what we notice is that people who make that choice again and again to be happy regardless of what the circumstances are, regardless of what people in their life are doing or saying, regardless of what's happening at work, those people actually, in fact, are happier in life. You know, if, if I say happiness is a decision I must make, yes, this is true. Each day, I have to do that. That doesn't mean that stuff will not happen in our life. You know, if you were brought up on fairy tales, I remember I being read fairy tales when I was a kid, and they, they often talk about, and they all lived happily ever after. How many people have heard that? They all lived happily ever after. What a wonderful thought. But what they don't tell you, the part that didn't make it into print, it got edited out, was, was a part, oh, excuse me, these are not my glasses. Um, what got edited out was that, okay, Cinderella and the prince, they meet, they, they fall in love, they get married, they live happily ever after. But while they're on their honeymoon, what they don't tell you is that all the help in the castle decided to go union. Yeah. And, and the moat overflowed, you know, the moat overflowed into the whole first floor of the castle, and the whole first floor of the castle needs to be professionally cleaned and sanitized now because you don't want moat all over your ballroom. You know, oh, and by the way, with all those rains that overflowed the moat, the castle roof leaked again and again, right? And they all lived happily ever after. This does not, because those things happened, doesn't mean, excuse me, <coughs> that uh, Cindy and the prince didn't get to be happily ever after. <laughs> but, but they had a mindset to go through things in an intelligent, conscious way you know, so that they could still be happy even though it's like, oh my God, the moat is ruined, everything will never, no, don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. You know, um, happiness, I think, is the byproduct, not, is a byproduct, it's not the commodity that we get to possess. I think the simple act of making good choices again and again and again is the way to happiness. And I'm gonna add one more thing to this that I think is incredibly important. That one of the secrets of happiness is to think of other people first. This is it. This is it. You know, so often, so often, people get so obsessed with what's not working in their own life, they think, oh, I can't think about anybody else. I can't do anything for anybody else. It's all about me, 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 me. That's the problem. Okay, that is the problem. If, you, we would, if we would make it a priority in our life to think about other people first, that takes the focus off of what's not working in our life, <coughs> and we get to be of service to somebody else, that is going to make our life better. <coughs> because people always feel better about themselves, they feel better about them, their life when they're doing something that helps somebody else. You know, the simple act of making good choices one at a time 
you know, is the way to happiness. And the secret of happiness is to think of other people first. You know, the choice can be simple. You know, I'm, I, we can you just say, you know, I'm just going to, um, what would be helpful in this situation? What's a kind thing to do? What's the loving thing to do here? You know, even small choices, I think, can have a lot of power and influence in our life. I look at it like this. A boat or a ship can be pretty big, right, compared to its rudder. But that little rudder, you know, is like a choice that can completely alter our course. This little rudder has a huge influence on a boat or a ship, you know, and that's, that's us. I remember talking with somebody who was living in a, um, a horrible living situation. And I remember asking, you know, what's one choice you could make that would make it a little more tolerable, that would make it a little better for you? And they couldn't see anything. They really felt like their hands were completely tied. Like, I, I don't know, I can't, I can't think of anything that would make it better. You know, they, 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 they insisted on, they had to keep making the choices that they had already been making that kept them in that situation. Now, they had lots of reasons they could not make another choice, which points me to this. In our life, it seems like very often we can either have reasons why we don't have what we want, or why we can't have it, why it's not available to us, or we can have results. And we get to decide. Sometimes people put so much energy, so much energy, into the reason why they can't have what they want that they absolutely miss the opportunity to experience something greater. You know, even, um, I believe that to have a happy life, we all have to set a course, right, and learn the the value of the small choices we make along the way. You know, what's the next right thing to do here? This is my question I ask myself all the time. What's the next right thing to do? What's the next right thing to do? You know, sitting, setting, sit, setting this course, I think, is being able to focus on your, your ultimate destination. You know, despite the fact that, yes, for all of us, there are potholes on the road. Has anybody lived in life and not experience potholes on the road, road bumps, seeming obstacles? No, of course not. We all do. We all have those experiences. I don't think there's a quick fix that there's one thing that if I did, everything, everything would be great and then I'd be happy forever. We say that there must be a clue that I'm missing, right? Because some people are happy. What is it they know? What is it they do? What am I missing here? You know? But no, happiness is the decision I must make. I'm choosing to be happy, and this is what I hope we will leave here today with, that happiness is a choice I make every single day again and again and again. And one more thing, I think we have to have the depth of character and insight to make the personal changes that we know we need to make. So often we know something's got to change in our life that it would really add to the quality of our life, it would add to our health, our well-being, it would add something to our interpersonal relationships. We've already gotten the message. There's something you need to change. And we're going, oh, not now, oh, not now, oh, not now. This is not a good time, this is not a good time, this is not a good time. I remember the last time I came through the airport, there was a person uh, going through the security, the TSA, in front of me, and they were really snarky with, um, with the TSA agent. And, um, and I thought, oh, that's not a good choice. That's really not a good choice, you know? Um, but they were, they were really, really busy, and on and on and on it goes. And, um, and so when it was my turn, when I got up there, just as I was picking up my bag, I, I turned to the guy, the, the security guy who, who screened me, and I said, thank you for keeping us safe. And he just got this huge smile on his face. You know, now that's ultimately, big picture, that's what they're there for. They are do, doing what they're paid to do, which is part of a bigger program of keeping us safe, right? So when you acknowledge people like that, you know, that took nothing from me, you know? And, and the, I think the other guy, you know, after the person in front of me went through the line, this guy was immediately not having a good day, and I realized it was totally within my grasp. It was within my power to help this person's day turn around. You know, so just by saying, thank you for keeping us safe, and he just beamed. He just beamed with that, you know? Like, you know, I think that so many people are in line there and they think that these people are the enemy, you know? And that's not. You know, the early Quakers believed that personal change or transformation was possible through living a very disciplined life. So for us, the discipline in the science of mind is to affirm, it's to do spiritual mind treatment, it's to pray, it's to meditate, it's to study, it's to find avenues to be of service, that we believe that being disciplined in all of these practices will also transform our lives. You know, if I know I can bring about personal change, I'm much more willing 
to accept responsibility for my personal happiness because I know it's up to me. It's my, it's an inside job. You know, it is now possible to have a calm inner life. It is now possible uh, to not have such dramatic highs and lows, you know, the ups and downs. It's possible to understand, you know, the, that our emo the emotions that we're having that seems to sometimes be able to really overtake us. You know, we can be free from the imagined, uh, all these things that our imagination creates. You know, happiness has to come from inner change. And inner change is more powerful than any external circumstance, right? Uh, so Viktor Frankl was a prisoner in the Nazi concentration camps, and he was subjected to horrific concentration camp atrocities. And he made a discovery. In his book, Man's Search for Meaning, he writes, the last human freedom is the ability to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances. We choose our attitude, whatever the circumstances are. So imagine if this guy in a concentration camp you know, just the absolute worst experience we could imagine. If he could choose his state of mind, we can choose our state of mind in the stuff that we're going through. Oh, that person parked where I want to park. And, you know, we have a meltdown over that, you know? Or <laughs> snap out of it. You know, there is bigger fish happening here in the universe. You know, that he discovered that this peaceful security comes from within and is dependent on how we choose to think and feel about the situations that we find ourselves in. So remember, happiness is more determined by our state of mind than by any external. And if you've been telling yourself, oh, if something out here would change, if someone out here would change, if some experience out here were different, then I could be really happy. You're diminishing yourself as a spiritual being, as an emanation of the Most High God. God has created you with everything you need within you and the power of an immensely creative mind to be happy right now. Let's do it. Let's pray. So we turn, thank you. We turn our attention inward for a moment right now, remembering that right here where we are, we are surrounded and filled with God's infinite loving spirit that that presence of God, the power of God, the principle of God itself is the most true, real thing about each and every one of us. That yes, we are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. And in this awareness, I speak the word for each and every one of us that we are making a conscious, empowered decision right now today to be happy. Regardless of what the circumstances are in our life, regardless of who's behaving or misbehaving in our life, regardless of all the externals, we make a conscious choice to be happy. And I know and I believe and I claim for each and every one of us that all of the circumstances of our life rise up to support that level of happiness. I know it's an inside job, that it's absolutely done unto us as we believe. And so on the inner plane, we believe that happiness is our spiritual birthright. As children of God, as expressions of infinite spirit, it is our right to be happy. And we do have everything we need within our own mind to be happy through all of it. So we include in our prayer today our family members and friends, our parents and children, all of our loved ones and those who we hold near and dear, and we claim for them an inner happiness, happiness that comes from what they do with their mind, their thinking, how they're being in life. We know that they are surrounded by spirit, filled, and we include in our prayer today everything in the world that pulls at our attention. So all of those situations that make us fearful or doubting, we say God is right there as peace, as peace of mind, as perfect outcome, as solutions, as healing, as all needs met for people everywhere. We bless our church, we bless all churches. We bless synagogues and temples and mosques and ashrams, all paths to God. Because we are all connected on the unseen side of life. In the mind and the heart of God, there's only one, and we're all it. So with a grateful heart, I give thanks. I release this word. And so it is. Together we all say, Amen. <laughs>